This is going to be your guide to competitive Pokemon in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. If you enjoy the video or if it helps out in any way, don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends, and comment your thoughts down below. So competitive Pokemon is made up of different components, the first one being IVs, or individual values. So if you look at the bottom, there is a judge feature. Press the plus button and then you can see the IVs of your Pokemon you generally want to aim for best. Now, as you progress through the story and complete the gym challenge, and I believe become champion, then you can talk to Nurse Joy, and she will eventually give you a tip that unlocks the Judge feature. This used to be like a hidden stat value that was kind of obscured to get, but now you can just kind of see the stats of your Pokemon. So, Static Encounters will give you three best stats. You can also see that in some, like, Terra Pokemon. So, this is the Overworld Terra Espeon. I've got, like, a Garchomp around here or something. This is that Water Terra Garchomp that's in the cave, but you can also get guaranteed IVs from raids. So a 5-star raid will give you 4 guaranteed max stats. A 6-star raid will give you 5. So there's a good chance you can get a perfect competitive Pokemon. You don't need all 6 stats to be maxed. For example, if we had Special Attack and Attack Flipped, Glade set. It's never going to use that Special Attack. Now the way IVs work is that they give you stat points at level 100 to contribute to your max stats, but you don't really need to worry about that too much, it's just about getting the highest possible value for a Pokemon, and then combining it with the other thing, EVs. We aren't there quite yet because I want to talk about Hyper Training. You might notice that my Quaquavel is Hyper Trained. Well if a Pokemon doesn't get the best stats that it needs, you can use Hyper Training to max out those IVs. If you want to hyper train your Pokemon, you need to head to the Ghost Gym Town, and this dude right here will hyper train your Pokemon if that Pokemon is level 50. So, a huge upgrade compared to previous games where you needed a level 100 Pokemon, and you also need bottle caps. So, bottle caps can be directly purchased now. Also, as a reward from 5 and 6 star raids, you can also sometimes find bottle caps and gold bottle caps for auction and as a reward from the Ace Star Tournament. So this is going to be the key to getting competitive Pokemon. Bottle capping for the max IVs and then after that is when you train your Pokemon to make them competitively perfect. Now breeding is still in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and it might turn out to be a pretty good way to get competitive Pokemon, but as it stands right now, a lot of my focus is just on using the resources given in the game to max out your Pokemon very easily. So after you have your IVs, now we need to talk about EVs, or effort values. Every time you KO a Pokemon in the wild through a direct battle, not the Let's Go feature, you will gain effort values depending on that Pokemon. So if the Pokemon has a naturally high attack stat, then you will gain attack EVs. Four EVs equal one stat point at level 100. Now because all competitive battles take place under flat rules at level 50, things get a little messy, so let's visualize it. This is Pokemon Showdown. You've probably heard of it, you've probably seen it, this is the team builder, it lets you plan out your Pokemon. So as you can see, four EVs, one stat point, and we can get 63 bonus points per stat. IVs, they have their own interaction, one IV equals one stat point, and you're not committed to fully investing into a stat. You can mix it up, you can kind of spread it out, and you can use the points to its fullest. So what this lets you do is go 252, 252, 4, for like a maximum case scenario, thus giving you 63, 63, and then one bonus stat. Now level 50 is where things get a little weird, so as you can see, 4 EVs will give us one stat, but after that it's going to be 8 EVs. So make sure you are calculating your Pokemon for level 50 when building them out. Now I'm going to be doing tons of competitive guides on existing Pokemon with Terra, Eevee gets Calm Mind, Calm Mind Vaporeon is one of the scariest, that Calm Mind Jolte- Calm Mind any of the evolutions just sounds terrifying right now, but also a lot of the new Pokemon are busted. So like, comment, subscribe, all of that cool fun stuff, notification bell, check out my moveset playlist and all my guides and stuff like that. But really what you want to do is make sure your Pokemon is optimized. You know, you don't want to put in 112 EVs here instead and then be missing points elsewhere, depending on the Pokemon that you're building out. Now there's also natures. This will raise or lower a Pokemon's base stat by 10% depending on the nature. Bold, for example, will give you more defense but cost you attack, and you can see that with the plus or minus right here. Now because it's 10%, you're going to see stat differences. If we go from 30 to 33, this nature is only worth 3 stat points to us. But if we go into something like a special defense, so 155 to 
170, that's worth 15 points. However, damage calculations and interactions, some Pokemon, they want to go like all in on a primary or beneficial stat, especially offensive Pokemon. Defense gets kind of weird because the way to run Blissey or Chansey is that you generally want to go max defense, max hit points, maybe a little splash in like special defense or something, depending on the numbers you're looking for because of the way that the damage calculation, all that stuff interacts. So that gets into the specific guides and much more advanced understanding of competitive Pokemon. Back to EVs. So there's vitamins in the game. Now if you've played old school Pokemon, you can only use a vitamin 10 times and then it doesn't work anymore. In modern Pokemon, starting with Pokemon Sword and Shield, you can use all of them. You can just go 26, max out 252, that Pokemon is set, or you can go 25 and then use some feathers. So these give 10 EVs each, feathers give 1 EV each. This is a really good and quick way to EV train your Pokemon if you have the vitamins or if you have an insane amount of money. Now you can also use power items. So power items will give you EVs every time you faint a Pokemon and it will speed up training as well. Currently, EVs seem like the biggest gate to completing a competitive Pokemon because the vitamins are so expensive. So we might have to go back to our roots and actually do traditional EV training with the power items and it's going to be best to do that in bulk. They want to get multiple Pokemon that you can train the same stat in. So this is where you find something like a Wattrell and then it's going to give you speed EVs. Put a power anklet on it, KO Pokemon until the Pokemon's maxed out and you're good to go. How do you know if a Pokemon is maxed out? Well, you can check on its stat page. So you go here, check summary, go right, and then you can see the switch graph view, boom. Sparkles mean the stat is maxed out, White means that you have put all the EVs into it. If you max out two stats and then it's not white, that means you still have your four bonus points to use. Or if you're trying to do like a weird triple split or something and it's still not completed, then you know you have EV points to still spend. Now there's more than one way to train a stat for EVs, but you can just kind of look for example Pokemon. Shinx, that gives one attack. If you can find them commonly, that's pretty good. I haven't looked for like the best EV training locations, because of the modernization and changes we've seen with the vitamins, but because of like the money gain and how fast you can run out by just like pumping out a couple of vitamin boosted EV Pokemon, maybe yeah, EV training and power items come back, so that might be higher priority. You can always look up a table as well that we have, that's not correct. Pages like this on Bulbapedia, list of Pokemon by effort yield, and then you can sort it, or you can look it by national dex number. So if you just see like a place where a lot of Pokemon are running around, it's like, oh wow, I can just KO those really quick, look up their EV yield, and then make a note of that, and then try to incorporate that into your training. So Shinx gives attack, we also have Chansey, obvious it's going to give hit points, also going to be really good for getting your Pokemon towards level 50 if it's not already there. This goes back to Terra Raid Pokemon already having a good amount of IVs, but let's say you catch a raid, the Pokemon's level 55, has three or four max IVs, well then a couple bottle caps, and then a couple of vitamins, and the Pokemon is set. Um, it starts getting weirder for like some of the other ones, so defense, this is going to be from Salty, those Pokemon are running around all over the place. Special attack, traditionally, is Ralts. You can find it fairly commonly. Well, Bebe is a Pokemon I've seen quite a bit of, especially around the Chansey spawn area, so you can get special defense off of that. And even Gumi has special defense. So it's about kind of utilizing the Pokemon that are around. Some stats are a bit harder to get and a little bit more obscure than others, but training is pretty straightforward. After that, we have the EV reducing berries. So fortunately, the game just straight up tells you the Pokemon will lose base points in its stat. There's a lot of different ways of getting this. Uh, you can do the auctions as well. Now, time skipping will kind of speed up and make it to where you can keep doing the auctions. I just don't know the impact or if there's like timeouts or anything. So I don't advise time skipping this early on until like it's more understood. But you also just get a ton through natural gameplay. You pick up items on the ground, you do terror raids, and you end up with a really good amount. Like I have. 82 Greppa Berries. I did buy some from an auction, but still. And these reduce 10 EVs each. So if you're trying to max out a Pokemon and then like you're not maxing out the stats, try to throw some of these berries at them because maybe you accidentally KO'd a Pokemon that gave you some garbage EVs and now it's clogging up your competitive. Happens sometimes. And that should set you up on the EVs. 
So it kind of seems like EVs and IVs have flipped on Nuance because the game just hands you so many IVs through Terror Raids and Bottle Caps are very easy now and Hyper Training is more accessible with the level 50. So now it's about like finding the optimal way of getting EVs. After that, you need the right moveset for your Pokemon. So TM Crafter, this is a big feature. Everyone knows about it. If you need a TM and you don't have it unlocked already, just look it up elsewhere. There's a hundred and something in the game now, like 170, so a lot of TMs. You also have a built-in move relearner on the Pokemon summary page, so you can remember moves that the Pokemon would have learned. This also works for quote-unquote level zero or level one moves, that sometimes when a Pokemon evolves or like under certain circumstances, a Pokemon won't immediately learn a move, but it's still somewhere deeper in the learn set. This is a way you can get access to that. Also, you can forget a move, and then for compatible Pokemon, this is how you can transfer egg moves through the Picnic system. So it's kind of like in Pokemon Sword and Shield that moves transfer, but that's through Picnicking. You don't need the same species, and you need a Mirror Herb to kind of flip that over. I'm going to cover that in my breeding guide, I guess. There's a lot, a lot of different ways to get the moves. So now you have like move set, EVs, IVs, your Pokemon set up. The only thing that's missing is nature, but once again, the game has you covered with nature mints. You can find these in various places in the world. You can also get them as a reward from terror raids, and you can buy them for 20,000 Poké Dollars each, which brings us to our new best friend. Chansey Supply, but also Delibird Present. So you can just go here, buy, and PP up Ability Capsule. This swaps a Pokémon's ability. Also, the Ability Patch is how you get hidden abilities. So that's a thing. Ability Patch, I got one from a 6-star raid. It was pretty cool. And as you can see, oof. That is kind of expensive, and we can also find the mints down here. So, pretty good place for competitive. So, Delibird Presence gives you the hookup on competitive items. If you don't find the item you're looking for, it's probably at another Delibird Present. So, go and look that up or find out for yourself in game. And you can also see the goods is where you can buy bottle caps, also, other evolution items. Flapple is not going to be version exclusive. We just have Nectars and a couple other things. This is also where you buy the power items for 10,000 each. So really, the biggest gate to competitive in this game isn't like knowledge or anything or breeding or like getting rare Pokemon. It's money. So having good money making, I've done a guide on that and I broke down like the best ways of getting money and kind of folding that into competitive is what will give you the most success and the easiest way of getting competitive Pokemon. Pretty much, the gameplay loop is do tons of terror raids, sell everything you don't need, buy everything you need to make a competitive Pokemon, as shown in this video, and done. Now, the Ace Academy tournament, really good for money, really good for extra competitive items, so that's also something to keep in mind. Uh, Chansey, I don't think becomes, like, needed for experience at a certain point, once you've done a ton of raids, because you just slap medium and large candies and extra large candies on Pokemon, and getting a Pokemon to level 50 doesn't take a lot. It's not like Pokemon Sword and Shield, where you have to use, like, an insane amount of candies to get a Pokemon to level 100. Now, those are the traditional elements of a competitive Pokemon, but Pokemon Scarlet and Violet introduces one more mechanic with Terra types, so you can change a Pokemon's Terra type in the restaurant in Medali. Also, now that I have the map open, I'm just going to say Porto Marinata. That's where you can do the auctions. I just don't remember everything, but it's part of the story, so if I say auction, you should already know that if you're, like, buying bottle caps and doing in-game stuff. Either way, this is where you can change Pokemon's Terra type, but you need Terra Shards to do it, and you get Terra Shards from finding them in the overworld sometimes or doing Terra Raids. Ideally, you just want to find a Terra Raid with the type you're looking for, and some overworld Terra Pokemon have interesting combinations like the Water Garchomp. Now you need 50 shards to change a Pokemon's Terra type, which can kind of be tricky. Now if you're doing high level Terra raids, you can get 4 to 6 Terra shards, so 10 of the same type raid to change a Pokemon. Not ideal, but not the worst thing. So that's kind of like the biggest gate to Pokemon is if you want to hard swap a Terra type, you need to like go around and do a lot of raids and then like online raids and stuff or trying to find the items. But overall, it's kind of mostly pretty accessible. Initially, it feels like the ugliest part of getting a competitive Pokemon, but we're just a couple of days in, so like, if you've just done 
hundreds and hundreds of raids because they're fun because the resources are really good and useful you shouldn't have too much of a problem just like spitting out a fresh competitive pokemon or even a fresh competitive team after just natural gameplay now it's going to be interesting to see how this develops over the next couple of weeks because there's going to be special EV raids, so maybe those rewards are really good. Also the special Charizard raids, those are going to have crazy rewards that could maybe just like super giga catapult some uh, competitive Pokemon. And you have until December to do so because ranked battles don't begin until December. A lot going on with competitive seems pretty fun, seems really accessible. If you've considered yourself casual, now is the time to break yourself from that. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.